just a moment as we bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for Jesus Christ, His great promises that He's given to us. We thank Thee for all these things. We're under great expectations here in this city among these fine Christians. We're expecting to see Him move among us, showing His presence, giving people faith, inspiring them to believe. That's our purpose of being here, Father. We know we can trust you. We won't be disappointed. For we ask it in his name. Amen. You may be seated. It's very happy this morning to have this uh, breakfast with these fine group of ministers here in the city. And so we, I think the, the brethren taped it if someone would want it. Such a time of fellowship that we had. And now, tonight's our second night, getting right along on the way. So now we trust that the Lord will bless you all exceedingly, abundantly. I believe I'm looking at a good friend of mine, Mrs. Upshaw, sitting here, Sister Upshaw. The Lord bless you. I remember Brother Willie Upshaw. I had a letter from him the other day, and Brother Willie's picture, Congressman. Uh, so he um, he'd been crippled for some 66 years. I was in a meeting one night, saw a vision of him sitting, going across the audience with his suit, bowing down. We'd been in a wheelchair and crutches, as you all knew him, and the Lord Jesus made him whole that same night. And he had the faith until he died. We feel honored tonight for his widow to be sitting here. How old was he when he went to see the Lord? How old was he? Lived to be 86 years old. went to heaven to be with We're grateful for our great man, great warriors of faith. Now, tonight, it's a, we don't want to keep you long. We kept you 10 minutes overtime last evening, 20 minutes until 10. We usually are out by 9.30. I'll try to make up for that tonight. I've been, I've changed uh, from my prophetic messages. I've been preaching around different parts of the country to evangelistic services again. And on those prophetic messages, we would just keep it on and on. And now to cut it down, it's kind of hard and it changes the the ministry altogether. And the reason I'm doing this because one day coming down from Canada, just above here in Montana, early one morning, the Lord Jesus, I know it sounds strange, but I was riding in a car and something attracted my attention. I heard a voice as plain as you hear mine. So your names wrote on that mountain. And I looked, and when we stopped, Billy and I, the Lord Jesus said, Return back now and start into the evangelism just as you did. That's why I'm here tonight, because going right back again, praying for the sick. There's a long story to it, and I'm sure you tape people here who hear our tapes knows about the story. I'm here to pray for the sick again. There's many great gifts in God. God can use any of them He wishes to if we'll just let Him do so. He is the Lord God. And now, I'm trying to not uh, keep from laying hands upon the people, if I can, keep from it. Because there, it looks like, that's all right, but it looks like someone to be healed, they say, well, so-and-so laid hands on me. See, I I like to see you just lay hands on Him, on Christ. My purpose is, we all know by the Scriptures that divine healing has already been secured for every believer. It's part, it's part of Jesus' suffering. He was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes we were healed. As Moses lifted the brass serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Same cause. And that was the type. Christ is the antitype. And then if, uh, if the old atonement could produce healing, how much more should the new one, which has got better things, produce divine healing? Now, Jesus 
was lifted up for the same cause that the brass serpent was. He was made sin because the serpent is made out of brass, and brass is a symbol of divine judgment. And serpent, showing the serpent's curse in the garden of Eden, where sin and sickness entered. And Jesus cannot, nobody cannot preach Jesus Christ as the atonement without preaching divine healing. No one can preach the gospel without preaching divine healing. Because, see, you don't, you don't have to have certain things like if an animal's got a hold of you, you don't have to just cut his foot off or cut his, his uh, uh, arm off or whatever's got around you. Just kill him from the head and you got it. And that's the way Jesus did when he, when he died for sin. He killed everything that sin ever did. He completely redeemed us. We are now uh, drawing the, the remuneration from our great, uh, the earnest money of our complete deliverance at his coming again. So, you see, sickness directly is a, a cause from sin. Somebody sinned. There was no sickness until there was sin. And then when sin entered in, sickness followed it. Sickness is an attribute of sin. And then when he killed sin, it took all the attributes with it, see. It had to. Now... We're going to read tonight a portion of the Scripture. I'm certainly glad to have back behind me here tonight my fine bunch of brethren that was at that meeting this morning and fine. See, Brother Shakarian back there, too, and many of my friends, more of them. So happy to have you, brother, here tonight. Pray for me tonight, if you will. Now, let's turn into the Scripture for just a little text, the Lord willing, and remember tomorrow night, praying for the sick again. And now, when I'm speaking, listen, everybody try to do this. Don't wait for any certain thing to happen. The thing for you to do is believe God right now. Amen. Believe Him right now. See? Now, there's been all kinds of ministries. God in this last days, I believe, has given us everything He's got in His book. Everything that He's promised, we've seen. And still, it seems like if people can't grasp it, those who are ordained to grasp it will grasp it. Only those. It blinds one, opens the eyes of another. Remember, we believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is not dead, but alive forevermore. And He's here tonight. We are in His presence tonight, and He's here to confirm and make good any promise that He made for this day. And He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So anything that He was, He is tonight. So let us believe Him now as we read His Word and speak of Him for the next 15, 20 minutes. Genesis the 22nd chapter and the 7th and 8th verse for the way of getting a text. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Lord Jesus, bless thy word. May it not return void, but may the seeds fall upon ground that will bring forth salvation to those who are in need, both physically and spiritually. We commit ourselves to you, the congregation, the audience, the word, the text, the context. May the Holy Spirit take over our beings that we see Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to speak just for the next few minutes now on God's provided way for this day. God always has had a way. There's two ways. That's our ways or His ways. God has a way for today. For He's always made a way for everything. God at the beginning know the end. So He has laid out His Scripture for each age. And that age when it comes along, now don't fail to see this. That age, when it comes along, usually the ministry is so mixed up in isms and so forth and traditions that it's a million miles away from the Word. And then God always sends someone on the scene, a prophet. And this prophet, God never changes his system. He never changes his ways. He always does it the same way. He always has. He must do it this time. And through this, God works and vindicates that Word. As I spoke to you last night, God doing his own interpretation. God needs no one to interpret the word to him. He interprets himself by vindicating it. 
making it real. And when God says he'll do a certain thing, then he does it. There's no more question to it. That's the way he does it. So God has made a way for us. God loves his children. He loves his people. He wants to help them. He wants to help you more than you want help. If you can just get that in your heart, that God's more willing to help you than you are to help yourself. But he has a way. And that's the only way that he'll work is through his way. You must come to his terms. Not your terms, his terms. You want it a certain way, but he, he gives it to you his way. Like Naaman, dipping in the, the, the waters of Jordan. Why well, I said the waters up in his country is much cleaner and better. But that wasn't what the prophet said, dip here. He dipped once, leprosy still there. Six times it was still there. He had to obey and come God's way. And when he fully obeyed God's way, the leprosy left. And I say tonight that if we obey God's provided way, leprosy will leave. Sickness will leave. Everything will leave, but we've got to come his way for this day. Now, dipping in the Jordan wouldn't do any good. Now, that was for Naaman. The law was for the, for the Jews. Grace is for, by Christ. But each age has its part of the gospel already predicted. This Bible is a complete revelation of Jesus Christ. There can be no more added to it or anything taken away from it. The person who does it is cursed. We cannot add nothing to it, take nothing from it. We must look in here and see what's promised for this age and then see it happen. Amen. That's God interpreting his own word. When it said a virgin shall conceive, she did. That's God's interpretation of it. What he promises, that he does. Now we see that God doesn't change his systems of doing things. He always does it the same. We're constantly changing because that we are finite. We make all kinds of mistakes and can improve and get better. But God's infinite. His first decision is perfect all the time. He cannot get smarter. He was a, he's the source of all uh, wisdom. He is all wisdom. He's all power, omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipresent, and infinite. So therefore, when he says anything, hang your soul on it because it's true. Now, some churches says, if we don't believe this and we believe that. God will never judge the world by a church. He judges it by Jesus Christ, and Jesus is the Word. Amen. He'll judge the church by the Word. And if this is a revelation of Jesus Christ for all ages, and for this age, He's revealed in this Bible what He would do in this age. And when we see it do it, when we see Him do what He promised to do, not a virgin birth, that was 2,000 years ago, but what He promised to do today, Amen. what He said He would do today, that's what He is today. Many times people say, well, I don't believe that. Well, you've got ease interpreter again. Yes. Just takes part of it, but not all of it. So we want to remember that God ever remains the same. His word and what he says, he will do it. Show that he doesn't change. In Genesis 1, he said, let every seed bring forth of its kind. Let every seed bring forth of its kind. Right there, we hit something right there that knocks all the evolutionists out. You cannot rebreed things. You take like the horse and, and, um, and the uh, donkey, breed them together, you get a mule. But a mule cannot breed back and get another mule. It stops right there. Every seed of its kind. They can make a breeding, but it changes itself right back again. Shows it does not evolute up like that. No, sir. It stops right there. You can breed spinach and something else together and bring out a kale. But you can't breed that back again. No, sir. You can breed hybrid corn. But you plant that hybrid corn back over again, you get nothing. You've got to rebreed it each time because God said, let every seed bring forth of its kind. And now, by high breeding things, look what the world's got into today. I was reading an article here, how the Reader's Digest, where in 20 years from now, women won't have babies if it keeps on. They're eating hybrid food. The thing of it is, they've hybrid it, and that's not a way the human being was made to eat that kind of food. It was made to, meet it in, uh, to eat it in the way it was created. That's the reason today that they can't keep meats and Everything is the way it is. It's because it's hybrid, hot planted, and uh, every kind of a way. It's just all mixed up. It's got to where the uh, entire human race is being destroyed by their own achievements, but trying to take something that God made good and turn it around and make it some other way, in their own way. Leave it the way God made it. It's even got into a place to where they're uh, trying to hybrid the churches today. From the real baptism of the Holy Ghost to a handshake, some kind of a sprinkling to a water baptism. Oh my, the whole thing's hybrid. 
We want to get back a hybrid plant. You have to bathe it and spray it and keep the bugs and beetles off of it. But not a genuine healthy plant. He's sturdy, strong. You know, no bugs come on him. He's got enough uh, in him to throw the bug off. So is a genuine Christian. You don't have to bathe him and pat him and tell him this, that, or the other. He's got something in him, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that throws all the rest of it off. You don't have to beg him around because he's a genuine plant of God. He's got something in him at wars. A Christian fights for every inch of ground he stands on. He must do that if he ever expects to exist. And by doing this, something in him that takes care of him. Eve tried to hybrid the word in the beginning. God told her the day you eat thereof, that day you die. She tried to breed it in with knowledge that Satan gave her. And when she did, she lost the whole human race right there to the devil. When she tried to mix God's unadulterated word with knowledge, it doesn't come from the knowledge of the world. It comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not by power, by my, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Uh, that's how God does it. God's word is the seed of eternal life. If you try to hybrid it, what will you do? You'll kill yourself with it. It will not work. It will not mix the more than all our water ever mixed. It will not do it. They have never in all the way tried to find anything that's better than God's way of doing it. You know, they've never found a way better for a chicken to get born in this world than peck himself out of a shell. Did you know that? They never have found a better way. The little fellow's born with a little snoot on the end of his uh, on the end of his bill. And that little bill, he got to go to work and go to scratching, scratching back and forth till he gets his head started, gets his head out, picks his way free. It's God's provided way. You pull him out of the shell, it'll kill him. He won't live if you pull him out of the shell. He has to come God's way. That's what some Christians today, we so soft soaped them and chucked their hands and brought them in by secret and joined them into the church. What they need is an old fashioned prayer order where they pray to until using themselves, coming God's provided way, till they free themselves from the world. Trouble of the day, they put their name on the book and join church, and that's all there is to it. But God's way, provided way, is to stay there and Work your way through until God gives you the new birth. That's exactly right. Pick him out. It'll kill him. That's what's the matter today with the people. A new birth. They all dodge it. They don't like it. Oh, they have substituted something for a new birth. Come up and believe, and that's all you have to do. The devil believes himself, and you know he's not born again. There's a new birth. There's something goes with it. It's kind of unfitting, to, untasting to the world. Any birth is a mess. I don't care where it's at. It's in the pig pen or, or a hospital. A birth is a mess. So is the new birth. It'll make you do things you didn't think you would do. It'll make you get out the altar, cry, scream, wash the paint off your face, raise your hands, praise God, speak in tongues, and all kinds of things. The new birth will do that because it's God's provided way to be born again. You have to die. You have to die before you can be reborn. Any seed has to die before it's regenerated again. Unless it dies, it abides alone. A man's got to die to his own thinking. He's got to die to the thinking of anything but God's Word and come His way. That's God's ground. We don't meet Him on our thoughts. We meet Him on what He said do. That's God's provided way for it. People dodge it. They don't want it. But it's true just the same. It'll, it produces death. You have to die. Die to your thinking. Well, I know the Bible says it, but I can't understand it. Then stay there till God reveals it. Amen. That's right. It's got, that's the new birth. Ducks and geese, they've never found a better way for them to go south than to swarm first. And that's right. You see them all get together, and they'll come themselves. Some kind of an instinct draws them together. And they get together and swarm before they fly, before they go south. What is it? It's revival time. When they all get together, do you ever hear such a chattering in your life as to hear them geese get together, or them ducks? I never heard such. And they have, there's no other better way for them to do it. And your time's up in the north woods. I watched the first beginning of the cold weather in Canada. A bunch of ducks born right there on that lake. They've never been off that lake. This little fellow hasn't. And the first thing you know, a cold breeze comes down from the north. This little, little old drake, he's just born to leader, gets right out there in the middle of that pond, sticks his little honker up in the air, honks four or five times, and every duck on the pond comes right to him. And he rises from there and goes just as straight to Louisiana as he can go to the rice paddies. Why? They've never found a better way for him to get there. You can't herd them together. You put them in a cook and a coop and truck them down there. That duck's got better sense than that. And you put him in that coop to take him down there, he knows he's headed for the slaughter pen. That's exactly right. He goes God's provided way. That's the way a man ought to do today. Not be herded in by some denominational cook, but come in the way God said come in by the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the new birth. 
swarming revival, not church joining, soliciting from door to door and passing magazines, but a birth being born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, God's way, freeing Himself from the world. Right. Believe in God's Word. The hour is here. That's what we must believe. Man, you can never, I don't care how many men would try to go to that duck uh, pond up there and say, now wait a minute, you little duck's got something to talk to you. We got an educated duck here. He's got a PhD in LLD. I'm telling you, he can lead you. Them ducks got better sense than that. Yeah. Yes, sir. They don't care about his better education, whatever it is. They can tell the certain honk he gives. It's an instinct. Oh, my. The church ought to know that much about the Word of God. It's a certain uncertain sound. The Bible said, Paul said, if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who can prepare himself for battle? That's right. If the church, if the church gives an uncertain sound of joining, God said birth. What the birth did there, the birth does the same today, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he was then, he is today. What they did then is the same thing we do today. The way they got it there is the same thing they do today. Same thing they got today is what they had back there. If it comes at all, it comes that way. That's the way God's provided way. It never changes. Ducks never change. They completely swarm each year, go north, south, and whichever way they go, they swarm first. That's the way God does. He sends His Word at season. That season, then it's manifested. And I don't care how many other things that go on, when they see the Word of God promised for that day being vindicated and promised, there's nothing going to stop them. A virgin shall conceive. And when they said, The Lord our God shall raise up a prophet like unto me, Moses said. And when they seen this man come and do the things he did, they know that was the Messiah. When Philip saw that done, he said, Thou art the Christ." Thou art the king of Israel. He knew it because the word had promised it, and it was living in that day. No matter how many Pharisees, Sadducees were standing around, doctors of divinity didn't stop him a bit because he was looking for that sign. When he saw it done, that was a sign of the hour. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what they were looking for. God's way provided. Yes, sir. Now, you couldn't give a duck education. He couldn't do it. He wouldn't want it. The rest of the ducks wouldn't follow him. No matter how much degrees he could say he had. Now, look here. I went to duck school. I know all about it. I have graduated. I know all these things. It wouldn't do a bit of good. None of them other ducks would follow me if they're genuine ducks. Amen. Because they're looking for a certain sign. They see that sign, they believe it. Amen. If a duck has a way of knowing it, how about a born-again Christian? We ought to know Jesus Christ in the power of his resurrection. Right. God does it. God's provided way. Remember, the education would be the instrument to lead him to God's provided place. The instrument they have is instinct. And they, dumb ducks, know that instinct will take them to God's provided place. So does the Holy Spirit take the church to God's provided place. Not to join a church, but to be filled with His presence. To see His Word made manifest, vindicated. That's God's provided way for the church always, part of the people. To bring them to the place that God has provided for them. That's exactly what the church should be today. Now, we know that's true. There's no better way for a, they never found a better way for a baby to get what it wants than to cry for it. Could you give him a bell and say, Junior, you're only three days old, but now when you want, to, when you want your bottle, raise up this bell and ring it. See if it works. It don't work. The baby cries for what it wants. That's God's provided way. Louder you cry, don't quit the little fella. He's only following God's provided way. He wants something. That's right. It's the only way he knows to call his mother. Scream for it. Cry for it. That's right. God recommends this for his children. God recommends this for his believing children. He did. Not intellectual speeches. Not some great theology, theology to teach. He wants you to cry for your needs. That's right. Cry for it. If you're too stiff and starchy, you'll never get it. If you're ready to limber yourself up a little and cry, God will give it to you. He likes to hear his children cry. Cry your needs to God. God wants it. That's His provided way. Cry out for it. That's the way the baby cries. That's the way He wants you to cry. Cry how long? How long does a baby cry? Until he gets satisfied. And that's the way the believing Christian should do. God's child. If you see God made the promise, don't give it up. Cry till it's answered. Cry if you see God vindicates His Word. When God vindicates His Word and proves it, sure, then you don't have to cry no more. you got it. Walk away thanking for Him. Until you do that, scream out till you get it. I like that. Persistent. Holding on. Not a hybrid plant. Not one that has to be babied and petted and packed around. Christians are real, genuine, born articles of God. 
They fight for their position and fight till they're finished on this earth. Every move of it is a fight. God told Moses, uh, he'd give him the land. He told Joshua, every place the foot of, sole of your foot treads, that I have given you. They had to fight for every inch of it. So do we fight for every inch of it. It isn't something to be babied and petted and around like that and say, well, I'll take you over there, see what you think about it. You pass your opinion. That's no way to come. Come with the determination. Amen. Come that you're going to stay there till it's over. Amen. Stay there until God answers and vindicates. A man that believes in God can see the presence of God, feel the presence of God, sense the presence of God, and know he's here. He's sure to answer everything that he made promise for in this day. Now cry till you get it. Hold on to him. Don't leave. You have to stay day and night. God don't want his children to listen to intellectual speeches. He wants them to cry out to it till the promise is vindicated. Abraham here had a need of a sacrifice. What happened? God provided him a lamb. That was God's provided way. He needed a sacrifice, so God provided it. Later on, he called the place Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide for himself a sacrifice. Now, Job, one time the old prophet Job, he was a prophet. He had got in trouble. Satan had desired to tempt him, and he broke him out in boils. And he'd taken his children, he'd taken his stock, he'd taken all he had. And he broke him out in boils. And his comforters come. What do they do? They provided nothing but a scorn, teased him, telling him why you sinned secretly. Job just held right on. He cried out. He was sure he was following God's commandments. He had done just exactly what God promised to do. What God promised him, that he would stand by him under the burnt sacrifice, and he stayed there. So God provided him a vision. He was a prophet. What did he see? He saw the Word, Jesus Christ. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. And at the last days he'll stand up on the earth. Though the skin worms destroy his body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. He provided the resurrection vision for him. Him being a prophet, he saw the Word. He saw the Word and he knew that his bones and his body would rise again in the last day. He was questioning if he knowed where God was, if he could only see. He said, a flower dies, it rises up again. A tree goes down, it rises up again. But a man layeth down, he giveth up the ghost. He wastes away. Where is he? Oh, that thou would hide him in the grave and keep him in the secret place till thy wrath be past. And the thunders begin to roar, the lightning begin to flash. The Spirit of the Lord come up on the prophet, and he stood up, and he saw the coming of the Lord, and he screamed, I know my Redeemer liveth, and at the last days he'll stand on the earth. Though the skin worms destroy his body, in my flesh I shall see God. God provided the Word, Jesus Christ, and he saw him and called him his Redeemer. Israel needed a way out of Egypt, and God provided them a prophet, a prophet that vindicated the Word that was promised to Abraham. Exactly. God's provided way. They couldn't train up a soldier. They couldn't do this. They couldn't do that. The only thing they did was wait for God's provided way. And he told, said he would bring those people out. After 400 years, his people would be in bondage, but he'd bring them out with a strong hand. He'd show his signs and wonders and get glory in that nation. Here come the man down when they cried and cried. And I remember all the crying wouldn't deliver him until that time was fulfilled. These things that we're seeing today couldn't happen 20 years ago or 40 years ago. It's today it happens. Amen. This is the hour. This is the time. Yes. Amen. Now is the time it's fulfilled. Why? God promised it, and here it is. They said a hundred years ago that the baptism of the Holy Ghost could not be again. They said 50 years ago the Holy Ghost, but you Pentecostal people proved them that it was God's hour to pour out the Holy Ghost. No matter what the Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran said, you stayed right with God's Word. Men of courage went out there and held on till the baptism of the Holy Ghost come and they spoke in tongues and magnified God. Nobody can tell you any different. God's His own interpreter. You got it. You might not be able to explain it, but you know you got it. <laughs> Who can explain God? Nobody can. I can't tell you how God can show a vision, but I know it happens. I can't see how God can do these things. It's not my business to explain it. He abides alone. He's Elohim, the self-sufficient one. I'm just his servant. I know he promised it, and I know it's here. That's one thing I know. I know that, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I know he promised this. God's here to make his promise true. Yeah, God's provided way. Israel has provided a prophet and vindicated the word, and they were brought out. This prophet Moses, he lived for several years in the wilderness, 40 years, struggling with these people, trying to keep them till he, to get them to the promised land. 
It come to a place the man had to die. He's 120 years old. There wasn't a place for him to die. When he got ready to die, God provided him a rock, the rock that he had smote in the wilderness, the rock that had followed him that they drank from. God provided him a rock, a place to die where Moses could die a decent death. Upon this rock, God let me die on that same rock. That's where I wanted. That rock was Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. After he died up on that rock, he needed Paul beers. God sent him a bunch of angels. Why not a bunch of his elders? Because no one could take him where he was going but angels. They packed him into the presence of God. He needed Paul beers, and God provided it. He went, God's provided for him. Hallelujah. Enoch had walked 500 years with God, and he pleased him. He needed a highway to go home on. God provided it. Elijah had cursed Jezebel about her painted face and her way she got all the people doing it. He'd tired and weary and was about ready to go home. He was so old he couldn't hardly walk across Jordan. God provided a way for him to cross Jordan. He wanted to go up into heaven to meet God. God sent a chariot of fire down on horses and tuck him up. God's provided way. God's provided way. He always does it just exact uh, right. Yes, sir. God provides a way. Always. Yes, the wise man. When they were on their road from up in Babylon, they were seeing a way they wanted to go down because they knew this king was to be born. They needed a compass. God provided a star. They left everything else behind. They didn't need compasses. They followed the star. It was God's provided way. God provided a way. They followed the star until they found the perfect light. Oh, the world needed a Savior one day. They was lost. They didn't know it. They thought they were saved, but they needed a Savior. God provided a son for the Savior. Why? No one else could do it. There was no man on earth, no man in heaven. Nowhere was able to do it. God overshadowed a virgin. She conceived and brought forth a man-child. And that man-child was not Jewish or Gentile. He was God manifested in the flesh. The only one that could redeem. His blood saves us. His blood heals us. It's that blood that we can stand on to any promise that he made. God promised to do it. God only meets the worshiper through the blood and under the blood. Israel had one place to meet God. Not in it. God's got one place today and he, he meets the worshiper. Not at the Methodist, Baptist, or Pentecostal. He meets them under the blood. That's the only provided place God has. Not in an organization, not in a union, but in the blood is where Jesus Christ meets his worshiper. When I see the blood, that's God's provided way. If the church had been thoroughly convinced when they seen him that he was the Messiah, when the little woman at the well, when she needed a Savior, she needed something to show. She'd been to church and everything else, and they'd seen this creed and that creed, till she turned to be a prostitute. It turned her on the street. One day she was going to get a bucket of water about 11 o'clock in the day, and there sat a man, a Jew, up here at this little panoramic. And she said, uh, when she went to drop her bucket down on the window to get the water, she heard a man say, woman, bring me a drink. And she said she turned quickly and thinking just to be an ordinary Jew, for he was just human as far as the body was concerned. He was a man. He drank, slept like we do. He was so much human till he could die, and yet he was God. Then we find out that when said it's not customary for you Jews to ask Samaritans such things as that, he said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. Yeah. Now go get your husband and come here. She said, I have no husband. Said, thou hast said the truth. You've got five, and the one you're living with now is not yours. What happened? God had provided something for her. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. That's what he'll do. The Word says so. We're looking for it. I'm sick and tired of all this stuff there. Creeds and things, Pharisees, Sadducees, and Herodians, whatever it might be. But we know the Messiah's coming. When he comes, what do you say about it? He said, I am he. Amen. Amen. God had provided a way. She left the water pot, a changed woman, and ran into the city and said, Come see a man who told me the things I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? Right. Peter listened to Andrew's story. And many times had listened here to Andrew talk about John introducing a Messiah and a man and all these things taking place. It's all mystery to Peter. But one day he come with Andrew to see Jesus. And when he got in the presence of Jesus, Jesus looked at him and he said, Your name is Simon and you're the son of Jonas. God had provided the way for Peter to see who he was. He was that Messiah. Now, we find out that after Jesus had died and ascended into heaven, the church needed power to witness. God gave him a Pentecost. He provided a Pentecost. 2,000 years has passed, friend. 
2,000 years has passed. In these latter days, we have got so man has got into the system of Christianity and has perverted it again, hybrided to creeds, churches, denominations, intellectual speeches, until the power in the real thing of the gospel of Christ is practically lost. And here we are with word promise for this last days, what will happen? What will take place? Man don't believe it. They've got away from it. Yes, if they're Christians, they say, I belong to so-and-so. That doesn't mean one thing. You've got to be a Christian by birth. Now, we got the whole thing into a bad one again after 2,000 years. The church today needs power and truth again. Oh, God raised up His Son that this would be taken care of. For He said, a little while in the world will see me no more, yet you'll see me. For I'll be with you, even in you. We find out in Hebrews 13, 8, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We find out in Malachi 4 that He promised us a message in the last days that would restore the faith of the people back to the fathers again. He promised it in the last days. He also promised in John 14, 12, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. Even more than this or greater than this shall he do, for I go to my Father. He's speaking one day. They said, Master, show us a sign. He said, a weak and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. That's the generation we're living in today. He said, and I'll give him a sign. For as Jonas was in the belly of the whale three days and night, so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and night. What kind of a sign would a wicked and adulterous generation find out? The resurrection sign. That's what we are promised today. The resurrection sign that he's still alive. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, as it was in the days of Lot, as we went through it last night, uh, days of Lot, what happened in the days of Lot? So would it be at the coming of the Son of Man. These things were promised. Many more scriptures to keep from taking up time. A little while in the world won't see me no more. Cosmos, the order, the church age, they won't see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the age. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What is it? It's God's provided sign. God's provided way. Abraham waiting for the sun. The last sign that he saw before the destruction of the Gentiles was God manifested in human flesh that knowed the secrets of the heart of Sarah when she was in the tent. Jesus said, that'll return again at the coming of the Son of Man. Brother, sister, I believe we're living in that day. I believe this is the day of the promise. You've got to have faith in what you're doing. If you haven't got faith, if you just taken it presumably, the word presume according to Webster means to adventure without authority. But when the word promises it, and God stands behind that word. You're not presuming anymore. You're doing exactly what God said do, and he's duty-bound to back it up. Hallelujah. Great famous re a revivalist many years ago. I seen him when I was a little boy. It was Paul Rader. He told a story one day. It's always stuck with me. He said one day he was cutting wood. He was a logger up in Oregon. And said his boss told him to go up top the hill. He was dreaming. That where he was really at at the time, he was down in the islands. And he took a fever real hot, and he was dying. They went for a doctor, but it's miles and miles away by canoe. Before the doctor could get there, Paul began to fade away, get sicker and sicker. He called his faithful wife. He said, dear, it's getting dark in the room, darker, closing in. And he went back into a coma. And when he did, he said he dreamed when he was in this coma that his boss sent him up to cut a certain tree. He found the tree. He fell the tree, stuck his ax into it, and reached down to pick it up. He just couldn't pick it up said his strength was depleted. He just couldn't pick it up. He said, all the size that tree is, surely I can pick that up. Let me try again. And he got down and he lifted. He just toiled till his wore out. He sat down to the side of the tree and said, I just don't know what I'll do. The boss requires this tree down there at the camp, and I'm too weak to bring it down. That he heard the sweetest voice he ever heard. It was his boss that spoke. But said when he turned to see who his boss was, it was the Lord Jesus. He said, Paul, what are you fighting so about? What are you all frustrated about? You see that water running there? So why don't you just throw the log in the river and ride it down, ride it to the camp. He jumped on the log and started down over the riffle, screaming to the top of his voice, I'm a riding on it, I'm a riding on it. Brother, sister, Jesus Christ promised these things to happen in the last days. I believe that we're living here. I believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't know how it's happened, but I'm riding on it. I believe that it's the truth because it's a gospel. God's provided way. I believe it is the message of the hour. It's God's provided way. I'm riding on it. Won't you jump on with me while we bow our heads?
Heavenly Father, we are riding into glory upon thy word. We believe that thy word is truth. Oh, God, may every man and woman tonight climb aboard the word. And remember, as they go along down through the journey, they can confess, I'm riding on God's promise. It'll take me right into glory. It's God's provided way for me today. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You said a little while, and the world won't see me no more. Yet ye shall see me. For I will be with you, even in you. You promised us, Lord, we would see you. The Greeks come one time and said, Sirs, we would see Jesus. And they was granted that privilege. And tonight, Lord, we want to see you too. It's our heart's desire. No one can ever hear of you unless they want to see you. Then if these Greeks was permitted to see you, and you provided a way for us to see you, you always make a way because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. A servant brought these Greeks into your presence, and they got to see you. Grant us the same privilege tonight, Father. May we as servants bring this audience into your presence. And may we see Jesus tonight, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Grant it, Lord. Save the lost, Lord. If there be a man, woman, boy, or girl, when we see our nation so polluted with murders and cutthroats and perverts and to see the corruption in the nation today and to see the corruption in the churches and see them leading to that ecumenical slaughter up there because they are not going God's provided way. They're going by the way of some creed instead of coming by the word. God, we pray that real, genuine, born Christians, as I illustrated by being real ducks, they, my sheep, hear my voice, a stranger they won't follow. Lord, your voice is the word. That's always been your provided way for the church and for the people, is your word. Thy word is the truth, and you are the word. And the Bible tells us the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Why couldn't Israel see their Messiah when they saw that he was that word, when he could discern the thoughts that was in their heart? Why didn't they, they understood it through the prophets that the prophets could, but when the fullness of God was made into his son and he lived among us, then they failed to see it because they were blinded. Lord, those who have their eyes open tonight, may we see Jesus in our midst. May every sick person be healed. May this settle it, Lord, that they'll never know more from this hour on. But what will believe that you are the Messiah? They're coming God's way. Many of them are here tonight dying. There's many here tonight that probably won't be here a week from today if you, your help doesn't come. Now, Father, you're only responsible for what you promised. But you did promise that we would see you. You promised that what you did, we'd do also. This is the hour. I've confessed it. I believe it. I heard you say so. Uh, your word says so. You confirm it. I know it's true. Now let it be known, Lord. It has been written. Now let it be done. For the kingdom of God's sake, amen. I don't believe we're going to call a prayer line. I believe I'll just use it from right here. How many of you sick? Now, would you be your, holding your hand witnessing you're sick? <clears throat> How many of you will witness the same thing? Brother Branham, I'm really not saved. Will you raise your hand? Pray for me. God bless you. You? That's good. That's God bless you. I'm not saved. Now, you that raised your hands and you that didn't. But, Brother Branham, truly, I want to be saved. It's my heart. I believe that there's nothing left for anyone in the world. What more What could you achieve would be greater than your salvation? Pray for me. I want to be saved. Would you raise your hand? All over the building. Where I want. How many of you haven't received the Holy Spirit? Say, I know I must receive it. Raise your hand. I, I want to. All right. There's quite a few that hasn't. Now, Christ keeps his word, and you've got to keep your faith in him. He is the word. Now, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, said that the word of God, which is Christ, Christ is the word. You all know that? Say amen. He is the word. The same yesterday, today, and forever. What he was in Moses, he also was in Elijah. What he was in Elijah, he was in John. What he was in John, he completed himself in and Jesus. And today, he's the same as he was then. And it's still God's word prophesied for the day, which makes him the light that lights up and vindicates the promised word. We're at the end time, friends. Jesus is present. I know you've heard that. What if you never did see in your life? And you never had a sense of sight? No human being did. But every once in a while, you feel a real warm feeling. 
And I had a sight. I could see, and I tell you, it was the sun. You say, I don't know how it happens, but I get a feeling like warm. You can feel. I say, that's the sun. What is the sun? It's a light. What is the light? It'd all be a new world to you. But what if I told you Jesus Christ was standing here now? What if I told you he's in the midst of us? He promised that wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. There I am. Now, that's either the truth to me. This is all the truth, or it isn't any of the truth. This is either the right or it isn't right. Now, as far as saving you, he did that when he died at Calvary. Healing you, he did that when he died at Calvary. You believe that? The Word said he did. Now, the only thing that he could do if he was standing here with this suit on that he gave me would only be proved to you he was Messiah. Not by nail scars in his hand. Any hypocrite can do that. But nail scars and blood over his face and marks and things, that can be done. That's been many persons even crucified like him. That isn't it. But his life, what was in him, the son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the father doing. It's a life that in him it proved. Not because he was a Jew did the little woman at the well believe him to be the Messiah because he could discern the thoughts in her heart. That made him Messiah. If that was the way the Messiah introduced himself in the days gone by, that was his provided way to make himself known. That's his provided way according to the scripture for this age. Do you believe that? Now, each one of you here, I'm a stranger. I've looked around. I don't see a person that I know. Everybody in here that doesn't know me and knows I know nothing about you, raise up your hands. Solid. Everywhere. This person laying here on this cot raised up his hand. He didn't know me. Nobody knows me. But remember, God does know you. God knows you. Now, if he proves that he's here, what is it, Brother Bram? It's a gift. What is a gift? What is a gift anyhow? Not to take something and use something and say, i got a gift of healing. i go out and heal this and heal that one. If I could, I'd certainly do it. But a gift, you misinterpret a gift. A gift is just get yourself out of the way and let the Holy Spirit use you. See, that's the gift. That's what a minister is. He don't preach what he wants to preach. He just gets himself out of the way. It's a gift. And inspiration comes. And he, he speaks to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Any other gift is the same way. I ministerial gifts and so forth has been. There's first of God-given gifts is first apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists. That's the offices. That's our gifts. Now, Jesus Christ promised that he would do this in the last days. If he does it. If he promises that and will do it, how many will believe and accept him tonight? Raise up your hand and say, I will accept him. How many in here then? Thank you. How many in here has never been in one of the meetings before? Raise up your hands. Mine. Nearly half the crowd. How many believes before he does it? You believe anyhow. God bless you. Now look, if I've told you the truth, God's obligated to answer me. He will. He puts his words in your mouth and they materialize. That's not. It's his words. It has to do it. I've sent my word. It won't return void. Now, if I could heal, I would do it. Just like the honorable late Brother Upshaw that was talking about. That old man sitting back there in that wheelchair, a gallant old man, I would have healed him if I could. I started to leave the platform, frankly, and I turned around and saw him in a vision going walking. Called him, told him what it was, and that was it. He got up and walked. Come to the platform, touched his toes after being a cripple for 66 years. The same night, a colored lady with her baby down there on the side. I said, I see a, a doctor with glasses on and, and he's uh, operating on a little colored girl and it's paralyzed her from her throat. An old colored woman, he couldn't hardly hold her off the platform. She said, Lordy mercy, that's my baby. And here she come. A bunch of ushers couldn't even hold her. I said, Andy, it won't do no good to come up here. That is, that's God. I said, it won't do no good to come here. Just believe. And she got down on her knees and started praying. I looked across the audience, and I seen an alley. Like, I seen a little colored girl with a doll in her arms going down through the alley. And I looked at the little colored girl, looked back, and it's the same one. I said, it's answered. <laughs> Up she got, away from the con. <laughs> it's God, see? It's God, see? He can't, no one can heal. It's your faith in God. Now, the Bible said that he's a high priest right now that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. You believe that? A high priest. Now, if he's a high priest, how would he act? If he's the same yesterday and forever, he'd act the same yesterday and forever. Now, you pray and let the Holy Spirit then, you say to God, God, this man standing there doesn't know me, but what he says makes sense. You are the same. You are Christ. I'm sick. I need. And if you let me either, 
If I haven't got the faith to do it, let somebody that I know have faith. And let it, you call and let, let, let me or that person touch the hem of your garment in glory. Then if that man is out of the way, then you use his mouth to speak back. And just do it the same way you did when you were on earth. I'll know that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us bow our heads now. Lord Jesus, turning from evangelism to prophetic work. But yet, I believe you, Lord. You promised it. And I pray that you'll grant it tonight. Granted, hear me. When this audience leaves here tonight and we go home, may we say like those who come from Emmaus, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way? Jesus was raised from the dead. They didn't know it. They were talking to him. They didn't know it. But when he got him in the house and closed the door, then he did something the way he did it before his crucifixion. That opened their eyes. They seen it was him. Again, Lord, May our hearts burn as we go home tonight, as theirs did, for we know that you've spoke to us along the way. Do the things tonight that you did when you were on earth, for you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Now, be in prayer. Just believe. Let's consecrate this side first. No matter where you're at in the building, believe God. I wish that everyone would be real reverent, set quiet, pray. <clears throat> this is totally impossible. I was talking this morning at the ministerial breakfast. A paradox. A paradox is incredible, something incredible, but yet true. You know that the Holy Spirit would stand here and speak something in that audience to people that I don't know. It would have to be a paradox. It's something cannot be explained. I don't know that he will. I'm just hoping that he will, trusting that he will. I just pray and say, Lord Jesus, I want to touch your garment. And I, I have a need. I promise you, Lord, I, I'll serve you all my life. God wants you to repent. If you're not repented, repent. Say, I want to repent, Lord. I want you to heal me. I want you to bless me. Heal me now, Lord. I'm your servant. But you give out prayer cards today. I was just going to ask Billy whether if he doesn't do it, I'd call a prayer line, but they never give out prayer cards today. Just sit, Reverend, believe. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take every spirit here under my control for the glory of God that his word might be made known that at the day of the judgment we'll have no excuse. Now, look this way and believe now. Pray with all your heart. Just pray humbly. Don't fight it. Just relax yourself and say, Lord, you made the promise. I believe you. That's what I have to do. I know it's not even me asking you. How many ever seen that light? Let's see. You've seen the picture of it. Let's see your hands. Has ever seen the picture of it? Would you see it right there? See, it's another dimension. If I were that lady, she's suffering with trouble with her legs and back. She, you believe that God can heal you, sister? What did you touch? You don't know me, but you touch something. If the Lord Jesus will tell me who you are, will that make you believe better? You're Mrs. Phillips. If that's right, stand on your feet. All right. Am I a total stranger? Do you raise up your hand if that's right? I've never seen her in my life. What did she touch? Go talk to the woman afterwards. Pains are all gone now. You're all right. You can go home and be well. Here's a lady right back behind her there. She's suffering from a nervous breakdown. Oh, God, if she don't... Her name is Mrs. Starr. Believe. Jesus Christ will make you well. Stand up on your feet and accept your healing. If I'm a stranger, do you wave your hands? Your breakdown is over. Jesus Christ makes you well. What did he promise? He promised it. You believe? There's a lady right behind her sitting there. She's praying. She's nervous, got complications. She wants to quit smoking. Her name is Miss Borden. Rise up, Mrs. Borden. Your cigarettes are over. Jesus Christ makes you well.
I've never seen a woman in my life. Do you believe? Now, you know I can't do that. That's Jesus Christ. What is it? The Word is quicker and more powerful than a two-age sword, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's the Word, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday today, and forever. Can't you believe that? Here, here sits a man sitting over here with a hernia. Heart trouble. That's right. I don't know the man. I've never seen him, but he's a minister. Reverend Mr. Kinsey. That's right. You believe, sir? Stand up on your feet. Receive your healing. Jesus Christ makes you well. By the way, would you do me a favor being a minister? Lay your hands upon your wife. She's suffering with a kidney trouble, with liver trouble, with overweight, with complications. Lay your hands on her. It's going to leave her if you believe. Say, there's a man sitting right behind you. He's shadowed to death. He's got cancer. The man suffers with tumor, cancer, nervousness. His name is Mr. Young. Believe now. Jesus Christ makes you well. Do you believe it? You accept it? All right, sir. Here lays a man laying here on this cot. Sir, I don't know you. If I could heal you, I would do it. I'm a stranger to you. You've come all this way. You've made an effort to come here. You can't hide what's wrong from you, but I can't heal you. You come here with your wife. That's her sitting there with that peach-colored coat on. That's right. All right. The man is shattered to death. He can't live but a little while now. He's got cancer. You're suffering also, sister. You believe God can tell me what you're suffering with? It's your back trouble. That's right. Is that right? Raise up. All right. You receive your healing. Believe it. Put your hand on your husband. Do you believe me to be his prophet, sir? If you lay there, you're sure to die. You can't live. That's all. The doctors is giving you up. Cancers eat you up. I've seen greater cases than you healed. I cannot heal you, but if you'll just accept it and believe it. Do you believe it? It's your only chance. Your last times are passing. Do you believe it? If you do, stand up out of the car. Raise up out of there in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet and be made whole and walk out of here glorifying God. Somebody give him a hand there. Help him. There he is on his feet. How many in here believes? Raise up your hand. Stand up on your feet. The rest of you wants to be healed. Stand up in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise up your hands. Praise God. Give him praise and glory. Now, thank the Lord for your healing. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Brother, the doctors has failed. This is God's provided way. Believe it. How many wants to accept God's provided way? Raise up your hands and give God praise. Every one of you. And believe that you're healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.